This is Twit. How are you feeling about liquid glass right now, Dan? Boy, uh, a little up and down. I mean, liquid glass has gone through a lot of changes during the beta process this summer. Um, it's gone. It's, it's gotten more transparent, less transparent, more dynamic, less dynamic. It's kind of all over the place. I just installed only this morning the most recent of the developer betas and have yet to see whether or not things have changed there. But I, overall, I guess my feeling is it takes some getting used to. It's obviously a departure from what we've been using for the last many years. Um, I think there are still some issues at places with things like legibility and things like, I think it's a little bit ostentatious in some places. It likes to have this very animated dynamic style where things jump around and widgets move and transform into other widgets, which is cool, but sometimes perhaps more when you want the buttons to fade into the background as opposed to be like, hey, hey, look at this button that just changed up here. So um, I think it has some places where it works very well, some places where it doesn't work so well. It'll be really interesting to see how third party developers adopt it or don't. I think that's a big question. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I have found as we've been going through the beta process that uh, as apps update, I have lost my ability to navigate <laughs> by just gut instinct. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's just one of those things where, you know, when an app changes their layer a bit, for whatever reason, the developers have decided that there's a better way to do things or Apple has come along and gone, hey, new shinies. Uh, it does make things quite different. Um, and it, it does just take a bit of getting used to. One of the things that uh, I have found a little bit difficult is on some backgrounds, the, like mm -hmm. the, the search uh, is kind of hidden. Uh, and the tapping on the dock, though, to open Siri in a type to Siri mode, that is great. And I am loving the whole rainbow effect around the outside yeah. of the phone when you open that. Um, as you mentioned, legibility has been a little hit and miss. Now, uh, my home screen and, and therefore, or, uh, or, sorry, my lock screen, therefore, control center to an extent are in dark mode in my podcasting focus mode. So this is perhaps bumped up a little bit in the uh, contrast and so on to make it a little easier to read. But uh, the control center has gone through a few iterations of changes. The first iteration was very see-through. Yeah. Um, and I think they've, they've added a bit more of the frosted glass in there just to make it a little easier for us to read. Yeah, I agree. I, I do think Control Center, I'm just looking at now on my phone as well, and this most recent revision feels a little bit better. You know, it, it's not like a totally huge departure, right? If you've used Control Center in the past, then you're going to recognize it. It's just going to look very different. Um, but it does have those like little, you know, reflection sort of things. And if you move your phone around, like, the reflections kind of move on the edges of those bubbles, mm -hmm. which is kind of wild. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm always interested to see how the, uh, you know, less tech savvy, more general user will respond to these things because I use my wife often as a proxy for that because she is not mm -hmm. into this at all. And her gut re reaction usually to seeing new things is that's stupid. Why did they change? it? <laughs> so we'll see how she hasn't really used liquid glass yet. I'm very curious to see how she responds to it. Yes. Uh, well, it's one of those things where as we've gone through and we've been looking at things, uh, I mentioned that it was a little difficult to use some applications when they've changed all of their UI. One of those is Safari. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you felt about new Safari, Dan, but this default Safari has messed with me. So this <laughs> is what Safari defaults to uh, in the UI of the you know, iOS 26. So it's got a three dot button in the bottom right where there's new tabs and bookmarks and all of those things, including the share button, which is the button I use most frequently in Safari. 99% of the time I feel I'm sharing something. Uh, there is a back button, which in this case, you know, takes me back to Duck, duck, go. Uh, but what I have found is in settings. Uh, so pre previously, all of the UI for Safari was at the top, and then they moved it down to the bottom. And then you could choose to split it back. Uh, I found if I go into the Safari settings inside of iOS uh, settings apps Safari, then I if I change tabs to the bottom, this just makes the entire Safari UI significantly easier for me to use. And I'm really hoping that more apps will be adopting alternative uh interface options for want of a better way to put it <laughs> so i have got my share i've got my share button back i've got my tabs button back i've got my forward and backward uh and then of course i can see the the url and everything and get to all of my safari extensions but this was 
definitely uh, one of those things where for a little while, for about a week after I first installed the beta, I, I felt like my phone is broken whenever I open <laughs> Safari. And thanks to, I don't remember who it was. It may have been um, Ricky Mondello or somebody, somebody posted on Mastodon and said, you know, try changing this and then Safari will be usable again. And I personally agree. Uh, I feel I need to go back and give it a fair shake though, uh, because yeah, it does take a bit of getting used to with all these new UI changes and the controls being under your thumb is generally a positive thing, I would say. It's just yeah. a little bit confusing to start with. Yeah, I've been trying to live with this new sort of compact view as they style it um, since uh, the beta started coming out, just as kind of Give it, give it that fair shake. See if it, I could get used to it. I, I think it's funny that you mentioned the share button. This is still true as of the most recent beta. Not only is there a share button under that three dot button, but if you press and hold on the URL bar in that compact mode, there is also a share button under there. Why it's in both places, I don't know. It's very weird. Um, but uh, it is a little weird for me getting adjusted to that because if you've been used to having access to those buttons on the toolbar, it's hard to remember sometimes which of these various things because pressing and holding on that dot button versus pressing and holding on the URL button versus pressing and holding on the back button can all yield additional options, which has often been the case. But with so few options up front, you kind of have to dig a little bit more and it can be hard to remember which buttons are where. Like you have to, to, to mm -hmm. make a new tab, you go to one button, but to close it, you go to another button. And sometimes I can find that very difficult and I end up hitting both. Oh, okay, was it under this button or under that button? I don't mind the idea that it gives you more room for your browsing, um, you know, just in terms of not providing as much, mm -hmm. you know, thickness at the bottom for that toolbar. But I agree that's a, certainly a trade-off versus being able to quickly get to whatever button you need. Hey, if you're enjoying this little bit of iOS today, well, you can check out the full episode. You can head to the website twit.tv slash iOS or watch the full show right here on YouTube. All you got to do is click that link below.